Greetings, South Valley family. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Reverend Laura for the opportunity of being part of today's service. Um, Shawnee and I are sad that we aren't able to participate live today. We are actually out of town, so we recorded our portions earlier in the week. Uh, but we hope that you are all enjoying the high holidays um, of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the holiest days in the Jewish calendar. And uh, we're grateful that our community is honoring those important dates with today's service. Um, as many of you may know, uh, and for those who, who don't, um, just a quick background on our family. So Shawnee and I were brought up in the Mormon faith, and my father <coughs> is uh, comes from Reformed Judaism, but I was raised by my mother. Didn't really know my father very well. I, my existence actually was kept a secret from his family, including my siblings, um, until I was about 25 years old, when um, it was the dying wish of his, his late wife that uh, our families be reunited. And um, that's uh, been a, that was a watershed moment in my life and uh, kind of a catalyst for a lot of change. Um, it was a few years after that that Shawnee and I both left the LDS faith and uh, became Unitarians. So where we feel like we can really express all of those different parts of our spiritual selves. So uh, I wanted to share an experience that I had um, with my Jewish family about 10 years ago when we were reunited. At the time, they were congregating in a reform synagogue called Temple Chai in Phoenix, Arizona. And around this time of the year, uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar, uh, we went to the high holiday services uh, with my family. And at their synagogue, they have this tradition where uh, people who have suffered uh, a significant you know, setback or, or loss or illness or anything that was really difficult and, and, and hard um, are invited up to the beginning uh, or to the front of the synagogue for a prayer of healing. Uh, the, the words for the prayer are sung, as is the case for many prayers in, in the Jewish faith in Hebrew. The uh, prayer is called Mi Shabarach, um, a very you know, popular and beautiful prayer for healing and strength. And the people who stand at the front of the synagogue are wrapped in a quilt, a very long, uh, 30 or more feet long uh, quilt that's been made by the members of the synagogue. And um, they all stand together, you know, being embraced by this quilt and having the congregation sing this, this prayer of healing for them. Uh, so this was an important moment uh, for me because, you know, I was still healing myself from, uh, you know, the, the trauma of, of being kept a secret from my, my family, you know, my, my siblings and aunts and uncles and grandparents whom I had always wanted a relationship with. And, you know, my, that's something that my father has never really explained to me, why, you know, I was kept a secret, why he didn't, you know, tell them about me, why I wasn't um, included in, in their family life until, you know, much, much later, until I was a father of my own, or of my own children. And, uh, and you know, for many, many years, that had been a very, you know, uh, sad and, and difficult thing for me to deal with. And he's never, to this day, still never apologized to me in, in so many words. But during the Yom Kippur service, which is about uh, repentance, atonement, forgiveness, uh, he stood up there with me at the front of that synagogue and, you know, held me as we, we sing and were sung to this prayer of healing. And I think um, that, you know, for whatever reason, that was the closest thing he could, he could do um, in his own way to atone for, you know, the sin that he had, that he had done. And, and that brought me great comfort. And even today when I get angry upset, you know, confused, um, thinking back on that experience does bring me comfort, um, and it helps to soothe those pains. Um, you know, a part of the, the service of Yom Kippur is to fast, so everybody is supposed to fast from sundown on Yom Kippur Eve until sundown the following day, and to help abate those hunger pains, people are often seen in the congregation smelling flowers like carnations. Um, one of my 
other favorite parts of the service, kind of old-fashioned, but um, is people are encouraged to sort of beat their own chests when we do the confession, uh, the list of sins that we may have been guilty of in the previous year. And um, it's sort of an outward show that we are repentant, that we're penitent, um, to kind of beat their chest when we, when we, when we list the, the many sins of which people are often guilty. Uh, you know, forgiveness is a sticky topic. In, in Judaism, people don't really grant forgiveness to each other. That's God's job. You know, God is the only one who can really grant forgiveness. And so the practice of asking and granting of forgiveness is not as important as it is, I think, in other Abrahamic traditions, especially Christianity. And in Mormonism in particular, there is this teaching that he who does not grant forgiveness of him, is he's guilty of the greater sin. And so for many years, I really struggled to know, you know, um, what I think about forgiveness now that I'm, you know, that I don't have to just follow some certain dogma. Um, but I think what I think about forgiveness is that if we seek to understand another person and we truly understand why they do the things they do, it is a lot easier to forgive. And it's certainly impossible, I think, to hate them or to, to really harbor ill feelings toward them. And so my, I guess my, my Yom Kippur admonition would be, let us seek to understand the people who have hurt us and our enemies. Because if we really understand them, we can't hate them, and maybe we'll even love them, and maybe we'll find forgiveness comes a little easier. And uh, that would be my, my prayer for you on this, this holiest of days in the Jewish calendar.